We are Emma, Sean, Rex and Maggie. Join us as we explore the UK and beyond in our old motorhome Rene. In this episode, we take a stroll around Fort Augustus, find a beautiful Falls Walk and take in some Scottish history. With the sun shining, we left Fort William, stopping off at the Commando Memorial just outside Speen Bridge. A beautiful bronze statue commemorating the service and sacrifice of the British Commando forces during World War II. This is a popular spot to take in the monument, but also to view the stunning scenery that surrounds it. We even spotted a chap called Derek on his Hillman Imp Challenge, driving the length of the UK for charity. We continued on enjoying the scenery along Loch Lochy and Loch Oik as we headed for our next stop, Fort Augustus. the weather being especially lovely, we headed straight to the village for a stroll around. Oh, it's coming. It's opening. (laughs) <laughs> Watching the boats go through the locks on the Caledonia Canal, a 60 mile stretch which connects the east coast of Scotland from Inverness to the west coast at Corpac, just north of Fort William, linking 38 miles of locks with 22 miles of man made waterway. We took a look around the Highland Club buildings and grounds, some of which were originally the English fortification, then later transformed into St Benedict's Abbey, a Benedictine monastery and a school for boys. Today it's converted into luxury holiday apartments. Not to be missed is the beautiful view of Loch Ness. Then it was time to sit down, enjoy the sunshine with a cold beer. Good morning in sunny Scotland. (laughs) Look at this, blue skies. Right, this is Port Augustus. And we've stopped over at a little new stopover site. I don't know if you can see the sign behind me. Just there, somewhere. There. Anyway, this chap is obviously putting in lots of lovely hard standing spots. Uh, Soon to have electric cook up as well. And uh, There's about 15 spots currently, and I don't know if you can see at the back here. Over there, he's in his digger, digging out another 15 spaces, I reckon. Um, It's a fantastic spot. It's a 15 minute walk into Fort Augustus itself, just down the road, which is brilliant. Um, And there's water, Elson Point, um, and bins over in the corner over there. and that's it at the moment. It was £10 for us to stay the night and we've been able to empty our loo and just top up our water bottles for 10 quid. I think if you just want to use the facilities to fill up and empty, it's a fiver. Um, and it's kind of honesty box. Um, or the chap comes around and collects the money in the evening. It's a really, really good spot. The only slight downside is the road stays quite busy all throughout the day obviously it's the a82 um and then at night you do get the occasional lorry but other than that it's absolutely brilliant 
and what a brilliant I don't know if you can see the hills but we are surrounded by hills so you've got the hills up there and the hills up there it's a really really great spot we are heading off today though we are heading towards Inverness um, somebody on Facebook recommended we stopped at a place for a walk can't remember the name of it but I'll put it down here somewhere so we're going to try and do that uh, depending on the car park situation with the van we'll see if we can get in and um, there's supposed to be some waterfalls it's supposed to be very pretty so we're going to do that next so we have stopped at Invermoriston, I think that's what it's called. It looks like it, yeah. yeah. we managed to get in the car park, so that's good. It's, it's all right, it's quite big, so motorhomes can definitely fit, just not many of them. Um, so we're heading out on a little walk. Um, apparently there's some waterfalls, so I'm gonna go and check it out. Yeah. So we've moved on to our next spot, um, just a little way up the locks towards Inverness. Um, we found ourselves a campsite for the night. Um, and the reason we wanted to stop at this particular place is so I could go and see a cart castle, which I'm walking to from the campsite. It's about a 15 minute 20 minute walk all uphill hence the reason i'm out of breath um so yeah so i've just come out of the campsite and i'm making my way up there and sean's staying behind with the dogs for a, for a rest so i'll show you around So I made it to the castle, um, it's very very busy, the man was umming and ahhing whether he could give me a ticket to come in because it's quite late in the day and it's pretty busy, <laughs> I got, got a ticket anyway. 
So, here is the castle behind me. <laughs> so, I didn't know that it was actually um, owned by uh, the Grant clan. Who knew? Situated on headland overlooking Loch Ness, Urquhart Castle has over a thousand years of dramatic history, playing a role in the wars of Scottish independence during the 14th century. In the 1500s, Clan Grant was given the castle and charged with making repairs and bringing it back into use. The castle suffered many raids from the Macdonald clan, the last of which being in 1545. They stole thousands of cattle and sheep along with other animals and stole everything inside the castle including beds, sheets, blankets, pots and pans, tables and chairs, iron locks and gates and also three boats. The Grant clan continued to own the castle and rebuilt it during the 1600s. However, it became not a favoured residence and by the mid-century was left virtually empty. A few years later it was used as a garrison for government forces and when the last soldiers left in 1692 they blew it up to prevent the reoccupation of the Jacobites. Since then it has been laid to ruin until the early 20th century when the castle was entrusted to state care and eventually passed to historic Scotland. It is now the third most visited castle in Scotland. Okay, so that was cool. Um, had a good wander around, had a read of all the history. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice and nice that it was a sunny day when I visited. Um, it's 15 pounds to come in. Well, that's how much I paid anyway. And I'd say probably about, you could spend probably about an hour looking around and they've got a nice cafe and a shop too. Probably best to pre-book your tickets in advance not like me and just rock up on the door and chance it because it does get extremely busy but well worth a visit so we've left Loch Ness this morning and we've headed up to Inverness um, we um, are currently sat in the car park of what's it called Tiso I think it's called um, or Alpine bikes basically Sean broke his bike earlier on in the week um and we've ordered a part and he's collected it oh no here he comes he's having trouble fitting it so i don't know what's going to happen he doesn't look very happy Ooh. hello hello what's going on um they sent the wrong ones oh, so where's the box i just put it outside i thought that might be the case all the bits back in it. Okay, so yeah, I need to go back in. He's gonna see if he can take one off one of the bikes they've got in there and put it on mine, but he's not sure yet. So we might have to order another set and we might have to come back. So we'll see. Fingers okay. crossed, we'll see what happens. Okay. Bye. Bye. So there we go. Oh, I had a feeling that was going to happen. You know when you just know? Oh dear. So our plan was, Maggie, stop digging. Our plan was to just head up to uh, a campsite for, for the weekend. It's actually the bank holiday weekend at the end of May. Um, so we're gonna head up to the campsite and do a load of chores, got some washing to do, and um, the van needs a bit of a tidy up. And the dogs could do with a bath as well. Um, so we were just gonna spend a couple of days here, literally, and then head off. Um, mainly to do some more mountain biking but also to um, maybe try and see some dolphins um, and that might have scuppered our plans now because we might have to come back it took just over a week for that part to come so I don't think we can wait another week I'm not sure uh, anyway I'll let you know later what's happened how'd you get on Oh no! It's all good. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, 
Geordie, who is the superstar in Inverness Alpine Bikes, is it called? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's so basically he's taken the crank arms off one of the specialized bikes they've got here, put them on mine, then he's going to order some replacement ones, and when they come in, he's going to put them back on the, the bike, bike he's got for sale. the stock bike. Yeah. Okay. So Shall we go onward and upward. Next stop, Tesco Extra. Woo! Yay! morning everyone um we are at uh the caravan and motorhome club site here in culloden um we uh after our stress and stuff getting the bike sorted out yesterday in inverness we decided to um book in to the caravan and motorhome club site just for a couple of nights because i really wanted to do some laundry and clean the van and we had some stuff to um charge up that needed good solid electricity <laughs> so we've decided to do that one of the reasons we wanted to come here is so i could go and um, have a look at the Culloden battlefield site um, which we'll tell you more about later so the weather's taken a bit of a turn for the worse it's not too bad it's a little bit chilly and cloudy today but I think it's going to brighten up later so we're just finishing off our chores this morning and then later on we're probably going to walk from here to the battle site I think it's about a mile and a half down the road um, and it's National Trust of Scotland so if you're a National Trust member in the in England you can get in free as well we are so we'll be getting in free otherwise I think it's about 14 quid to get in per adult um so anyway so that's what we're going to do later in the meantime I think I'm just gonna have another coffee I've just um trimmed my beard with this mirror yeah I think there's something wrong with it what well what? what's wrong with it it's new yeah, I know, but it must have some kind of old filter because it makes me look all wrinkly and old. That's I don't know. You, yeah, yeah, it's because you are old. <laughs> nah, there's something wrong with the mirror. <laughs> Sean and I and the dogs walk down to the oh, <laughs> walk down to the Culloden Butterfield site. Um, unfortunately, it started raining on the way here, and we got absolutely drenched. And the dogs aren't allowed in the visitor centre, but they are allowed on the battlefield, which you can see behind me here. Um, but they got soaking wet and cold, so Sean decided rather than waiting for the weather to stop to go back to the campsite. So he's gone back and I've just had a look around the museum. You're not allowed to film in there, so I haven't filmed anything. It's a really, really good uh, explanation of the history leading up to this battle. And um, if you're interested in the history, well worth a visit. So I'm going to have a look around um, the battle site and uh, yeah, just uh, take it all in really. The Battle of Culloden was the last battle during the Rising of 1745 to 1746, ending more than half a century of Jacobite conflict. Over time, this battle has been personified as the English versus the Scots, but the truth is that it was a lot more complicated than that, and people from Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales, and even France fought for the Jacobites, and several Scottish military units fought on the side of the government. As you walk around the site, you have the red flags which indicate the government front line um, and the blue flags which indicate the Jacobite front line, which I'm heading to now. But also there's stones that um, have been put down for each clan that died during the battle. 
so it's well worth uh, taking the time to have a look and walk around. 6,000 Jacobites and 8,000 government forces entered into a battle which lasted just under an hour, starting with artillery and gunfire and ending in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In that time, it is estimated that 1,250 Jacobites and 50 government forces lost their lives. It was the last major battle to be fought on the British mainland. So, if you do want to go to the Culloden battlefield um, from the campsite, that's the Caravan and Motorhome Club site at Culloden Moor, um, it's about 15 minute walk. Um, there's a path that literally runs from the campsite pretty much all the way to the battlefield you do have to cross the road once and there's one section where you have to walk quite next to the road and go over a little narrow bridge and um, where there's no path but it's not too bad as long as you haven't got very small children with you and um, we did it with the dogs on the way um, and Sean went back with them on his own um, so it's kind of fine and the road's not too busy I am um, I definitely recommend walking the car park is quite big there but if you've got a motorhome or a camper van you probably want to leave it and do the walk it's quite a nice walk I'm just walking through the woods here now it's very pretty now the sun's out so I'm heading back now um, to the campsite for some tea because I'm starving so it was probably about a 20 minute walk back but I forgot to say as well, there is a bus stop just outside the entrance to the campsite. So if you're not up for walking, you can get the bus directly to the battle site. So it's good. Join us next time as we head north and dip a toe into the NC500. Thank you.